of the Montgomery County Legislature regular meeting, March 27, 2019, <coughs> Tuesday, 7 o'clock, to order. Roll call. Chairman Hegwell. Present. Legislator Wilson. Present. Legislator Duchesne. Present. Legislator Patch. Present. Legislator Isabel. Present. Legislator Patel. Here. Legislator Kelly. Present. Legislator Sweet. Present. Legislator Diamond. Present. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Side for public comment. If there's anybody that would like to speak, please come to the rail. State your name for the record. Seeing none, we will move on to. Oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> first, I'd like to thank the county legislator. This will be my first time addressing you as a citizen since you put down a legislator. I used to be a real frequent flyer when you were board of supervisors. And Can you stop for a second and for the record just put you in Oh, sure. Your I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm Lori Vivian from the town of Charleston. And I'm actually here for you most of us because you're our county legislator. And I'm delighted. Nobody worked harder for this charter and this change in government than I did. I was really sick of partisanship government. And I'm delighted <coughs> to have each and every one of you have the opportunity to be here. And I am here about a, an issue that concerns me deeply, but I want you to know that even though the issue concerns me, I'm so proud of what you've done collectively as a group and doing that. Um, we can disagree with it, but I'm seeing that you're trying. You really are trying to make some changes in this county that are long overdue. And the issue that's concerning me the most right now and I apologize to go to because I know this is a local issue, is the sewage sludge plant that is being proposed in the town of Glen. And I realize this final decision is going to come to bear, but I strongly believe this is an issue that is going to really negatively impact the whole county. The, the tone, just, just the whole method is uncomfortable. It's not so much that I don't believe the Lysic company has merit, but they're not our friends. They're not our family. And they've been proven to be bad neighbors in their own home area of Southgate, Canada. And I think the money that they're presenting, I think it's 55,000 um, to one of the communities. When you start looking at property values, when you start looking at the negative impact on these people who can't walk out their door. If you haven't looked at the testimony <coughs> from these people addressing their board, their kids can't go outside and play. The kids can't go out of their school and play a recess. You cannot like anything else that's not out there, but you can't look at those videos and listen to that testimony from those individuals that live in that community and say for one minute that they're ridiculous or they're stupid. They can't breathe. Not all good development, or not all development is good development. We need it. I understand that. I appreciate all you do to try to find us the right fix, but this isn't the right fit for us. I can't imagine anyone would ever want this in their backyard. It has to go somewhere. I heard about the trucks. I heard all the arguments for it. I have been made so many phone calls. I had a conversation with a gentleman by the name of Ryan Peter. He is from the Biosolid Center of Excellence in Kansas for the federal EPA. The, there's no downstream regulation. The regulation on this type of industry is very sketchy because it's kind of new. It all sounds great when it's going on, but then they get there and it falls apart. We don't have the resources in this county to follow through with it. I encourage you to 
contact for me. And Peter, I'll give you his contacts. He put me in touch with a whole bunch of others. And I talked to a whole lot of other people before I got in touch with him. I encourage everyone, watch those videos. Call these people. Plastics, they have a great product. I'm not saying it's not great. It's just not great for us. I appreciate the time. I appreciate your hard work and commitment. And I think we can always continue to do that. We've been in Montgomery County since 1983, and we are for the arts, conservation, and preservation. And I just want to reiterate what Lauren said. We have been trying to help our planning committee and our zoning committee by doing research. And let's call a spade a spade. These people have come to us. They're not even Americans. They're from Canada. They're an LLC of a huge conglomerate. And they have millions, if not billions, of dollars in Canada. They are coming to us, and they are asking for economic welfare. They're asking us to pay for them. And not only are they asking us to do that, they're asking us to take the risk. Now, when you do business, the higher the risk, the more profit. But in this case, we are led as a county taking all the risk. If they have made a mistake, and by injecting the ground with pharmaceuticals, heavy metals, etc., who do you think in 10, 15, 20 years is going to come back on Montgomery County? It's our IDA part. It's going to come back on us. They're an LLC. They can go bankrupt. They can sell to someone else. Like the cell waste management, do they do business with all the time, which is what they said to us. Um, these are not good people to be in bed with. And their product is untested, unproven, according to their own California website. If you do the research, this is not a good thing. It's an unproven technology, and it's fairly dangerous. And the new thing in food is to go for organic. And if you stop and look at the big companies, Panera Bread, all of them, none of them will do business with even farmers who use this on their land. You can't, you can't grow crops on this land legally and then sell them for human consumption. <clears throat> you can only feed animals. Well, where do all the pharmaceuticals go that are ending up in this? This is stuff from our landfills and our uh, solid waste management things that we, have, we can't get rid of. This is at the end of the process. So now, their, their radius that they've sent to us is 150 miles. It's almost the entire of New York State. If you put it out on the map of New York State, that's astronomical and it's outrageous. We shouldn't go for this. It's going to be like GE, who thought they were told, dump the PCBs in the water. They'll be covered by silt. The water will wash them away. No problem. It will never be a problem. Look at what's happening to GE. It's one of the companies that made it through the Depression. One of the greatest companies we have in America. They're going under now. They sold their turbines to China. They're, they're selling off everything. They sold off their um, uh, financial uh, arm of their company. This is what's going to happen to us. We are taking all the risk. Who is taking all the profit? Have they offered us a percentage of their business like you're doing these risky things? No. They're paying for that. Why should we do this? Do you know how much these people get for these jobs handling this? There was an ad in the local paper, the Leader Herald. 10 an hour, it's not even minimum wage. They said they'll have up to 10 jobs, which they haven't ever documented or proved to us. Do you want your children having 10 $50 jobs, handling biosolids all day long, unloading trucks? Is this what you think of as a great thing for Montgomery County? We'll be the laughing stock of all of New York State, having these trucks come in. What about our infrastructure? What about our roads? What about um, mistakes that happen? Some of this stuff can't be cleaned up by our local firemen. We're putting them at risk, too. Why would we do this? What is in it for us? There's nothing in it for us. I myself went to um, Michael Yeveley and I asked him, 
to let me go in the park, and I suggested two restaurants to go in there called the Diners, called the Twins, and I suggested it be filled with um, photographs of local people who are twins, of which there are a lot in the town of Atlanta in the old days. And uh, he asked how many jobs, and I said 60, bare minimum. You can imagine all the waitresses and the cooks and the busboys. He said, no, if you want to do it, you have to pay $38,000 an acre. That's how much we've spent already. This is over 10 years ago that I went to him. Why, why would he not take that, local people, giving jobs and good jobs to local people? Straight out of the high school, they have these jobs. Why are we taking 10 jobs from a company that is putting us at great risk? It's not right, and none of us should do it. It's such a poor business decision. If you think about it and you hear that something is too good to be true, it is. Don't believe it. These people say outrageous things. When you check up on them, it isn't true. There are stories everywhere, as Lauren has documented. We have other people who have done all the scientific documents. You can look it all up. We've made a website. All the scientific material is there. All the companies that will not take this product, will not allow food grown on land that this was done to. I myself would try to sue anyone who did it next to me. It's super dangerous. They do nothing to get rid of the chemicals, the pharmaceuticals, the mix of them. This is what everyone is worried about. They're worried about endocrine change and improvements. So please, you know, I've been on these um, committees where we talk about what is the highest value in Montgomery County. What do we have to work for here? What is the best thing about our county? You know what? We all agree without any dissent. We agree it's our river, the Mohawk River. We agree it's our history. It's our Dutch farms. It's our historic houses. And that is what we need to work on. We should put our money in that and not into these fly by night companies that are LLCs that can go bankrupt or go out of business or sell to somebody else. Who are they going to sell to? Think about that. What's, they only want 14 acres. What's going to happen to the other couple hundred acres? Who would want to be next to them? What's going to happen to all our values, our roads, our infrastructure? Do we have enough money to pay for that? 200 trucks a day? Where's the money going to come from? So thank you all. Think about each nut. Think about what we've had to go through. And let's not take a simple solution. These are complex matters. There are good solutions out there. We should all be working together to put in something for the future, to create real jobs, jobs we would be proud to say our children have them. I would never allow my children to have a job like this. Not one of them. And I, I hope you would leave it. This isn't good enough for us. I mean, we're a beautiful county. We have all the history. Don't do it. Please help us to say no to them. They're not good people. And all they worship is money. So I hope that you all understand where we're coming from. We're passionate and we don't want that. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll speak. We're going to discuss this, uh, this project. My name is Tom Blair from the town of Charleston. I grew up in Saratoga County. Recently, in the Times Union, there's an article comparing the economic success of Saratoga. Montgomery County, the adjoining county. Saratoga County is obviously much better. Um, Saratoga County is a nice place to live. People want to go there, people move there, and once they move there, the money, people money moved in, businesses followed. I suggest that, that would be a better way of developing Montgomery County instead of bringing in businesses and trying to hire people, you know, creating jobs. The jobs go where the people want to be. The people have money. And, uh, you know, using Beach as, as an example, it's $6 million to clean up part of that project. So if this company moves in, and if they don't make it, somebody's got to clean it up, and it goes back to the taxpayer. I mean, Beach Nut is a good local example. That's all I have. And it does affect all of you because this product would be used in all counties 40 miles, so it affects everybody. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else?
London. Um, we have some proclamations tonight. And the first one is to be um, to Russia. And um, Legislator Peck will be introducing her. We have a proclamation from the Montgomery County Executive here. Whereas the County of Montgomery is proud to recognize and honor those individuals who commit to serving others, by doing so, make a positive impact in the county. And whereas Montgomery County Soil and Water Conservation District Agricultural Economic Development Coordinator Jalisha Godbow was a recipient of the 2018 Division VI Merit Award which goes to individuals have, who have shown outstanding effort in promoting their district and its activities, and whereas Jalisha has only worked for the Soil and Water Conservation District for three years, but has already made a tremendous impact in the community, especially in regards to getting younger generations interested in agriculture, and whereas Jalisha has shown youth the agricultural opportunities available to them through the installation of a high tunnel at the Fond du Fultonville Central School District, through the annual Farm and Home Safety Day, as well as by maintaining Sunday on the farms. And whereas Jalisha has always, excuse me, is always looking for new ideas to boost the county's agricultural opportunities. And due to her resourcefulness, drive and hard work, she will continue to assist local farmers, students, and the community as a whole. Now therefore, be it resolved, County Executive Matthew L. Ossenfort, Legislative Chairman Robert Headwell Jr., and Legislator Michael J. Pepp, on behalf of the Montgomery County Legislature, hereby proclaim Tuesday, March 27, 2018, as a date to recognize Jalisha Godbout for her leadership and determination to make our community a better place. Congratulations. <laughs> soil and water here in the uh, legislative chamber. Uh, we do have a proclamation for Corey, and um, I'll be happy to read it. Whereas the County of Montgomery is proud to recognize and honor Montgomery County Soil and Water Conservation District Manager Corey Nellis for receiving the Willard F. Crony Distinguished Service Lifetime Achievement Award. <coughs> Excuse me. And whereas nominations for this award come from all over, from all of the soil and water conservation districts in New York State, and only one individual who demonstrates outstanding excellence given uh, the award per year. And whereas Mr. Nellis began his career with the sewer and water, or the sanitary, uh, <laughs> I'm on the sanitary board. Right? <laughs> so soil and water. <laughs> soil and water conservation uh, district. Um, at, at the age of 17 and has served for 31 years, all of which he has been professional, courteous, and known to go the extra mile for the residents of Montgomery County and his own staff. And whereas Mr. Nellis is always willing to assist farmers, even on his day off, and has been considered an asset to the farming community, community for several decades, <coughs> excuse me, decades due to his knowledge, practical experience, and the countless hours he has given to the boards, committees, and other groups. <coughs> and whereas Mr. Nellis has also spent numerous hours helping farmers secure funding for projects and is considered a great teacher by many due to his impressive list of former employees who have continued careers in conservation. 
And whereas Mr. Nellis takes pride in his career, motivates his staff to share the same passion for conservation that has led him to become such a deserving candidate for this honor. Now, therefore, be it resolved, County Executive Matthew, Matthew L. Ossenford, Legislative Chairman Robert Headwell, Jr., and myself, Legislator Roy S. Diamond, on behalf of the Montgomery County Legislature, hereby proclaim Tuesday, March 27, 2018, an official date in Montgomery County to most gratefully recognize, show appreciation to, and wholeheartedly thank Corey Nellis for his years of dedicated service to Montgomery County and its residents. I just I want to say you know since I've been here um, there's very few people that I hold hold in a, such a high regard as Corey um, with what he does for that cultural community but also when you look at what we invest in the in the district about hundred ten thousand dollars a year and and the way he leverages that money with state and federal dollars is just remarkable. Uh, the return on the investment is just, and I think he's the only department that ever said no when I asked if he needed more people. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always going to be honest, and I just want to thank you for everything you've done, and, and I've, I've learned a lot from you, and have a tremendous amount of respect for you. I appreciate for that. <laughs> Taking pictures. <laughs> You guys all think it's speech, speech, speech? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Please do. Most <laughs> people, Martin told me I'm not allowed to. <laughs> but I really, I do appreciate this. And, you know, I, I put a lot of energy into the district. And then, you know, it's easy to be successful when you have successful people around you and the legislative support that we've had at the district for since I've taken over as manager in 97. So it shows that I really appreciate the staff. And you can't have a successful operation if you don't have successful people with you. So. It's very important, and I do appreciate the support that we get from the board of legislature every year. So, thank you, everybody. And next, we have um, Legislator Wilson going to uh, honor uh, Robert Huff's retired industrial development agent chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. This, this I consider an honor. Whereas the County of Montgomery is proud to recognize those individuals who have given back to the community are, are committed to serving others. And whereas Robert Hobbs has served as member of the volunteer boards, but most recently retired from the seat as the IDA chairman. And whereas Hobbs served as IDA for 12 years, four of those years as chair, made with a number of projects that have provided growth and strengthened the economic base of the community. Whereas one example during this tenure was assisting the Ivy Day in securing the beach nook in a new location, could stay within our community and continue to grow. Whereas Hoffs has taken great pride in volunteering for boards and aspire to see the county prosper, he will be missed for his leadership. I agree with that. Kind, personality and experience of thought of the idea. Now therefore be resolved, County Executive Matt Ossenfort, Legislative Chairman Robert Hewell Jr., myself, Legislator Dan Wilson, on behalf of Montgomery County, <coughs> Tuesday, March 27th, as a date to recognize Bob Hoffs for his hard work, persistence, commitment to making the community such a wonderful place to live. Thank you, Dan. I know you've worked very intimately with Ken over yes. the years and yes. you know a lot of folks that aren't following this regularly don't realize the impact the county IDA has had on economic development in the county and the amount of jobs that are associated with our county IDA. Ken, do you know off the top of your head the last number that we had? I mean it was in the thousands. I think it was almost, you got it in the report. It, it's, it's, okay. it, it's, it's tremendous the impact that you've had and I thought Ken this might be a nice opportunity for you just to say a couple words. Um, uh, he's, I'm not putting you on the spot. All right, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, I, I think it's important. No, obviously, 
Somebody said, it was, you know, the, about being a leader. Well, it's pretty easy to be a leader when you have people like Ken, Sheila, Michelle, Carl Jr., Carl Sr., all the people that have served on the board since I've been on. There's a couple of them here. You know, that's, um, you, you can't not be a good leader when you have good staff and good people around you. And that's what I take best out of all of it is that working with the people, Making it better for the county. That's what I'm glad we did. Thank you.
Sheila Snell's been with me actually the longest of, of everybody up here. She's actually our, our CFO, and uh, Chief Financial Officer, and Economic Development Specialist on staff. Uh, Carl Jr., he doesn't look anything like Carl. <laughs> Carl Sr., he's a little bit taller and a little bit slender than Carl. Give <laughs> <Carl's laughs> 20 years. <laughs> Carl Sr., he's our, uh, he's our great assistant on staff, and then Andrew Santillo is our, our newest member uh, of the staff. He's, our, he's actually our staff assistant, and uh, he's a great guy to be involved because he's been involved in the county, so it's, he's, uh, he's uh, joined us and you know, continued to follow him. Mm -hmm. so. I'd be re remiss not to uh, introduce a Carl Sr., Carl Gustafson Sr., who was uh, one of the original part of this team, and now who's heading up on our Exit 29 development. And also Bill Rohr, who uh, doing our consolidation plan and special projects for the uh, exact. So I'd like to thank uh, those two folks. Um, just if you go back in history just a little bit, when the uh, first legislature was here, I think it was uh, Ken and Sheila uh, answering the phones, and that's all we had. Of the past. One of the first things uh, the legislature thought, and based on what the legislature kind of hammers us every uh, meeting about what we need to do, was we need to increase, we need to ask staff so that Ken and Sheila can do their job and have a lot of people doing things. We, we now have a GIS person, a business comes in uh, and wants to know the demographics. Um, I mean, that can get, get, get her demographics, get them the demographics right away. So we're, we're placed uh, for some great success here to, uh, to add to what we've already, what they've already accomplished. So um, let me read the proclamation before I get carried away. <coughs> Whereas the county of Montgomery is, before I, <laughs> <laughs> recognizing the valuable employees of, of, uh, of the county is an uh, initiative of uh, Chairman Edwell. And uh, I know it's going to be tough to beat this group, but I uh, <laughs> just wanted to let you know that uh, they're greatly appreciated. Whereas the County of Montgomery is pleased to honor employees who take pride in their career and who are committed to giving back to the people they represent. And whereas the staff of Montgomery County Business Development Center should be recognized for the countless hours they spend working to enhance the local community. And whereas these employees strive to obtain new business, retain existing ones, and have acquired millions of dollars in grants over the last several years, which contributes to the county's economic growth. And whereas the staff of the Montgomery County Business Development Center are truly dedicated to improving the quality of life for the residents of Montgomery County and to exemplify high professional standards, ambition, and persistence. Now, therefore, be it resolved, County Executive Matthew L. Ossenfort, Legislative Chairman Robert Hedwell, Jr., and myself, Legislator Roy Diamond, hereby proclaim Tuesday, March 27th, 2018, an official date in Montgomery County. To most gratefully pay honor, sincerely appreciate, and wholeheartedly thank the Montgomery County Business Development Center, uh, excuse me, center staff. So I just, this is a topic that is uh, near and dear to my heart that I wanted to say a few words and just a couple quick things. Um, first of all, we all identified that we need state and federal help to solve the challenges that are before us and, and, and get development. Uh, each year we outperform other areas to the point where we are the envy of other counties when it comes to the annual CFA process. Well, we usually get about $4 million a year. We outperform our population relative to the other counties in the six county region. We consistently outperform. This year, $10.8 million in economic development funding from New York State. Other counties are looking at one, $2 million a year that are, that are our size, $10.8 million. We just received $6 million uh, for the Canada Harry project. We were designated a special project and we're the only one like that in the entire state of New York. And that is because we have done things as a team effort. And these are the folks that are getting the work done on a daily basis. That is something to be tremendously proud of. When you look at, from Montgomery County, if you start in the east and go in the west, you look at the city of Amsterdam has the first brand new construction that's going to be happening in over 20 years 
You're talking about a 300 person banquet facility and 120 new housing units right on the, the river in the city of Amsterdam. The town of Florida Business Park, completely full. That has completely exploded and, 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 and it's been amazing. We've got money to repave and resurface the bike trail from one end of the county to the other. You continue to move west a little bit. Um, you get to the Canada Jahari site. I mean, $6 million grant. This, as far as I know, that's the biggest grant the county has ever received, period. You, and then I overlooked the Dollar General project, which is a $91 million project, private sector investment, that's going to create 400 jobs. That's what's going to get people to move into the community. And as you keep going down the line, uh, Canal, Fonda and Fultonville, $500,000 uh, this year for canal improvement projects. These guys are doing a great job, and I couldn't be more proud of them. In the beginning, as, as, as Roy mentioned, we gave them the tools they needed to be successful. And I tell you, it is a toss-up between Corey and, and this department on which we're getting a better return, but I don't care. I'm, I, you know, you can get <laughs> co-winners to that category. But let me just read you something to show you the impact that these folks are having. You know, essentially, we get these people that come in, this one-stop shop, whether you're in the city of Amsterdam or city of, or, or village of St. Johnsville, you come in to our office, you have a professional experience, and then we work with the local communities and then the local communities determine if they want the project or not. And that's what our role is. We are here to try to serve the communities and we write grants for, for the communities that cost five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. We do it for free through these communities. But just to give you an idea, in 2017, the assisted companies of our, that, that this team has worked with have employed over 2,045 individuals with a combined annual payroll of $162 million dollars and generated over 7.5 million dollars in property taxes and pilot payments. These projects accounted for over 509 million dollars in capital investment. These folks deserve a pat on the back and I'm so thankful to have you here in this county. and the skill set in different areas and, and honestly no one here can do it alone none of us can do it alone we're, we're doing it as a team uh, with the support of the county legislature and, and honestly the county board of Sprint for that the support that they've given have given our, our our department and the county legislature tremendous support uh the county idea has given us great support financial support through the years um and, and, and guidance and then with the leadership of, of our county executive and the and the support and allowing us to do our jobs. I think that's you know that's that's really important. We try we keep politics out of. And I think the chairman, former chairman Hayes knows this too. One of the things we talk to the IDA for is listen, we're here to try to make the right decisions. We're, we're trying to do it uh, responsibly with the greater public good, the greater public good in mind. And we try to keep the politics politics out of it. I think we've done a great job of that. That's why we're successful. Uh, on a personal standpoint, I want to thank I want to thank the staff because. You guys have been great through the years. Uh, some of you guys only six, seven months, other ones don't know that uh, have worked with me, and, and I truly enjoy coming to work every single day, and I truly, I truly enjoy working for this company. And I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I completely forgot to mention our 6% sales tax increase over last year, which was the highest in the Mohawk Valley, thanks to these guys.
for a motion to uh, approval of minutes for February and March. So moved. Kelly, second. Legislature. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? <coughs> Looking for a motion to accept the budgetary transfers. Kelly, Rosa Kelly, second. By Legislator Wilson. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Acceptance of the procurement record. Legislator Kelly. Second. Legislator Diamond. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Whole business. Any people in business? Any none? New business. We need a motion to amend our agenda. Sweet. Sweet. Resolution authorizing the, exec uh, the execution of a letter of resolution among New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, Historic Preservation, Empire State Development, in Montgomery County, and the Village of Canon Jahari. Sponsors were Kelly and Sweet. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 62, resolution adopting introduction of local law B of 2018, the local law opting out of real property tax law. Sponsors were Pep and Wilson. Discussion? Yes. <coughs> no, I'm clear on this. It's clear from where I read it. I didn't think that this affected homeowners and their addition, so they put it to their property. And I think by reading this as a respect to any solar energy system, uh, this would also affect homeowners. This also would have so I'm glad everybody has their hand. My feeling is that the, 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 unless there is some legal reason that we should segregate the two, I don't think that the financial return uh, by adding the assessments of <coughs> homeowners is worth what we're trying to do. I think it's one of the benefits that they've received for using so so, I mean, uh, I'm not going to support this with that language in there. I think that's anybody else has any thoughts on it. Um, I, I know when we passed the plan, it was similar to a pilot or solar farms and stuff. I have a former uh, legislative body just has to write links about uh, not. Residential property use that decide to have solar on their own properties. Um, and I think it's strictly um, out of the exemption for uh, the so called so called solar farms. Um, is there a reason that we are deciding now to close that bill for everybody, including residents? Well, if I could just speak briefly on it. The reason this is back before you, for, for one reason, is the law was amended to include geothermal and other forms of energy. So, 
Um, please start back up again to include those additions. For, uh, first of all, second of all, um, to address your point about homeowners, um, as a reminder, any um, revisions by this local law would only be effective moving forward. That would not affect current people in the county that have solar. Um, third, um, with the discussions that the Economic Development Department has had with local assessors, it doesn't seem like there would be a big change in local homeowners' taxes based on the addition of the solar panels. This is something they're still figuring out, but correct me if I'm wrong, it seems that um, that would not be a very big change of anything um, from what I've heard from assessors. But the, to, to address your point, um, what, one of the reasons that it's come back up is because there's a change in the, in the law. Um, and another reason is, um, administratively speaking, doing the pilots has become a, a big um, use of resources in the county. There's a lot of solar firms coming in. Um, and it's, it's become a big, uh, big time save to try to chase, uh, chase a lot of them down and put these pilots in place and get the payment schedule. Uh, and, we're, and then you're not capturing all of the revenue that you can capture from large solar farms, such as you know, 800 acre, 1,000 acre farms that are coming in. Um, so this uh, brought back up for the, the consideration of the legislature. Did I, is there anything I missed? I think the pilot, while we had good intentions, I, I don't think that was the right way to go. 
from. I think simply opting out for the reasons described, the administrative uh, structure, the interest, the new generated interest that we've seen and we're hearing of, um, this is just going to be much easier to enforce, much easier to, to hold folks accountable, make sure people are paying what they're supposed to pay uh, moving forward. Uh, if we continue with the, with the old uh, pilot program, I think you're, I think we're, we're going to be uh, a tough hill to climb as far as the, uh, the enforcement of that actual law. So, and I'm sorry, last thing is, and, and we, we went and talked to the assessors because our concern was similar to yours. What's the impact going to be on homeowners moving forward? Um, and the assessors were actually doing these assessments on any solar panels. It is going to be very minimal to the point where I feel confident in, in supporting it because the impact, uh, the impact as a whole is more beneficial to the homeowner than any minor impact they're going to see on their particular. Thank you. 
first, it just depends. And honestly, uh, in regards to uh, maybe I can tell you, you know, the executive can tell you very important talking to the talking to the assessors that have a hard time even assessing anything more to the residential properties that have these so many issues because they truly don't know what it would be for them when they go to resell to their house. In some instances, you have you have, you have a, a public out there that there is not solar panels on their house, so it could you know kind of just been a wash while we're here in front of the local assessment. Sweet. Is there a difference if you if the homeowner owns their equipment compared to leasing? The the tax the difference in the taxes from what I understand is it's a difference in assessed value of the some value of the equipment. So the ownership of the panels. <coughs> so if you if you lease or if you own it's still the lease because I know there's a lot of companies that can lease lease from any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 63, resolution to award bids and authorize county executive to sign contracts 2018 road maintenance program. Sponsors were Headwell and Diamond. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Resolution um, 64, resolution amending resolution 185 of 2017. Sponsors were Sweet and Pat. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Resolution number 65, resolution authorizing the Fulton Montgomery Schoharie Workforce Development Board submittal of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act of 2014, local plan for 2017 to 2021. Sponsors were PEP and Duchesne. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Yes. Resolution 66, resolution authorizing the Fulton Montgomery Schoharie Workforce Development Board submittal of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act of 2014, Regional Plan 2017 to 2021. Sponsored were Kelly and Wilson. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 67, resolution authorizing Fulton Montgomery Schoharie Workforce Development Board submittal of a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act of 2014 Infrastructure Memoranda of Agreement for Center Partners. Sponsors were Kelly and Diamond. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 68, Bond resolution of the County of Montgomery, New York, dated March 27, 2018, authorizing community college improvements, various improvements to county buildings, the acquisition of equipment and bridge and culvert replacement, estimated aggregate cost thereof to be two million four hundred thousand, appropriate set amount, therefore, and authorizing the answer. Interest of 2.4 million serial bonds of the county to finance said cost and uh, related expenses. Sponsors were Headwell and Pertel. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 69, resolution authorizing the county executive to execute agreement for the FMCC Campus Lab and Classroom Phase 1 project. Sponsors were Pep and Kelly. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 70, resolution authorizing the county executive to execute agreements 
for the FMCC building and bathroom and locker room project. Sponsored with Wilson and Pep. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Resolution number 71, resolution authorizing the county executive to sign state approved child care facilities agreements. Sponsors were Diamond and Pep. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Yes. Resolution number 72, resolution amending the 2018 operating budget PHEP grant carryover funds. Sponsors were Patel and Isabel. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Resolution number 73, resolution amended the 2018 operating budget, carryover grant funds. Sponsors were Patel and Pep. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. Resolution number 74, resolution amending the 2000 operating budget, NYSDOH 2017 Local Health Department Performance Incentive Award. Sponsors were Patel and Diamond. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Resolution number 75, resolution authorizing the county executive to sign contracts with Hometown Health. Sponsors were Sweet and Diamond. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Yes. Resolution 76, resolution amended the 2018 operating budget, IAP grant carryover funds. Sponsors were PEP and SWEET. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Yes. Resolution number 77, resolution authorizing county executive to sign contracts for provision of mental health services. Sponsors were Patel and Diamond. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Resolution number 78, resolution, resolution amended to resolution number 6 of 2018, resolution delegating erroneous assessment, corrections, approval, authorizing to audit committee. Sponsors were Diamond and Wilson. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Yes. Resolution number 79, resolution Amended the 2018 operating budget, account clerk typist position transfer. Sponsors were Diamond and Kelly. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Yes. Resolution number 80. Resolution number 80, uh, authorizing county executive to sign a three year addendum to the existing records management system contract with IQS. Discussion? Chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chair, I'd like to sponsor an amendment uh, to this resolution number 80. And, uh, and I'll go over the changes I'd like and then I'll go for a second. Uh, I'd like to I mean, uh, title remove three years uh, from the title, strike the second, whereas totally and change the resolve clause to resolve that the Montgomery County Legislature hereby authorizes and directs the county executive following re review and approval of the county attorney to sign an addendum to the existing record management system contract with IQS to add $12,100 in equipment and uh, strike uh, second further resolve. Second. I'll say. Any other discussion on that? All in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay. Now,
and then the time to exit at 12,100 hours. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor of resolution number eight? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. <laughs> resolution number 81. Resolution approving the abstract of audit of claims, sponsored by Kelly and Wilson. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Yes. Okay. Resolution number 82. Sponsored by Kelly. Second by Sweet. Resolution. No, resolution number 82, resolution awarding clarifier, re rehabilitation, and optimal leach agent acceptance project contract and authorizing the county executive to enter into said contract. And we have a sponsor of Kelly and Sweet. Discussion? Yes. From what I see here, it looks like they're only going to be only putting in the certain the certain numbers one, three, four, alternate nine, and alternate ten. Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, another new business under public. Anything else? Yes, Mr. Kelly. Um, so, with the passage of the law that we have on tonight and uh, the taxes, uh, I see a lot of seniors and uh, new seniors that are not necessarily informed properly on the tax rebates and things that they might receive from the sewer. Or any other energy uh, system that might provide a federal or state income tax credit. Um, you know, if, if a senior is, is under the assumption that she, they will be receiving a tax credit because cushy salesmen, and now we're coming along and, and going to increase their assessment, no matter how little it might be, I, I really think we should put together something like a consumer protection or something that somebody in the county that can. Is available to help or guide this on their projections. What, what actually is available to them? A lot of these credits are not refundable if seniors may not have income tax and they're assuming they're going to get a $5,000 credit, which would help offset the cost of uh, the increased assessment. Uh, it just seems that we would be getting a bit all the way around and I think it would be that somebody, whether it be Sealer and Nate slash Sean, the enforcement officer that we have, or somebody. Um, I think somebody should be. I think you bring up a good point, and um, we'll look at it this week so we can come up with something else. Motion to adjourn. Charlie, second.